Good morning from another cloudy day here in Papua New Guinea. I am heading up on an hour and 15 minute flight to Wewak, a coastal strip, taking three fuel drums full of Jet A just because we can't get fuel up there right now. Like I said, it is very cloudy out this morning. You guys can see it's probably gonna be an instrument departure out that way. I'm heading up over the top of these mountains behind me. But you guys can see it's just a big wall of clouds right now. I think driving in, there's actually a couple different layers and I might find myself that I can actually jump over top of these mountains at maybe 12,000. Worst case, I got to go all the way up to 14,000, punch through the clouds and then right on back down to 11,000 for my flight up to Wewak. So let's get all the covers off the plane and uh, get out of here at eight. It's just after seven right now. And yes, I did get a new watch. I'm gonna show you guys later and tell you a little bit about it. A company sent it to me to try it out. So let's get ready and get out of here by eight. Focus the seat, you can put him in the second part or kind of same. Four plays, top of the hat rack, napla, the hop. Let's go through what I have on the plane, walk through my weight and balance, and what my plan of action is for today. This is just my DFR here. All right, so just starting at the top here, this is all the tabs we have up here, the nav tab. This is what I'm gonna be doing for my fuel. So I've got 1260 coming out of here, which gets me back here, round trip fuel with my IFR reserve, 480 pounds. Next page over, weight and balance up here says I've got 1260. They said I had 48 in the front pod. I've got one seat in the second pod. I've got four seats in the back. And I also had, uh, let's see, 10 kgs way in the back and then these three drums 555 kgs divided by three is 185 actually no no we want 555 divided by two 277 and a half so 277.5 277.5 puts me right there if i click on that shows where i am take off and as i'm burning fuel i'm actually moving it forward so that all looks right. I've got 19 kgs remaining, which also I've got on, let's go back over here to our normal equipment. I have, I don't have my fuel ramps, but I have my fuel boards and straps. But yeah, I do actually have those. So now let's do all legs. That puts me seven kgs over. So what I can do is I can take off a couple of other equipment items that I do not need for this. Let's see, I can do my overnight covers. I can leave those here. I can leave my scale here if I wanted to. Um, let's see, and let's do the window washing. So that's eight kgs right there. Let's do all legs. And that brings me back down to just one kg, two pounds underneath my max gross weight getting out of here. Too easy. All I have now is to depart. Let's flip on our V2 track down here. That way I can connect to this. That way I can send my messages from my iPad to our flight coordinator when I depart, when I land, how much fuel I have, how many people on board I have, things like that. So that is next. Let's get started and then we're gonna go over the weather while everything's warming up. Cause it's gonna be a very cloudy, I think, getting there today. All right, oil pressures. And NG's over 20 now, so. To the NG, it's over 35. Now my eyes go up to ITT. And doesn't really do much, 630. It looks like it's gonna be a high overcast. It could, well, I'll show you in a minute. It could be a couple different things on the way over there today. Okay, it is just about seven minutes till eight in the morning now. So I just got it here. 
8 a.m. and it's just blue from Garoka all the way up to Weewak with maybe a little bit of potential rain and some buildups and things right here. Rain off to the ocean side, that's what all that yellow and red is. Not really worried anything about that. All the blue just means it's going to be very cloudy. So the next thing I'm going to check is we'll check our satellite and that will tell me if that blue is just clouds or if it's just a lot of moisture. So it looks like as we get into Weewak area from about 20 minutes out, looks like there might be some rain getting in. I did get a text a minute ago saying that it's just a high overcast and clearing in Weewak itself, so no dramas there. It looks like just all this white is just going to be a bunch of clouds. So I can click on low clouds, or I'm sorry, let's see, low clouds. Getting out of here, obviously, a little bit in that area, kind of where that rain was forecast to be. It's pretty good, so I can click on medium clouds and they're just everywhere. So overcast, broken, pretty much everywhere. So we'll see how much IMC time I get on this flight, but it doesn't look like it's like built up weather yet. I mean, it's only eight in the morning, so it should be pretty nice. We got 1260 on the fuel there. I need to connect my iPad now to the airplane. We'll go to Bluetooth and we are in Kilo this morning, connected. So when I come back, it gives me this option down here. There we go, where I can hit send for full up. I believe I filed for 11,000. Let's go back over here. No, 12,000. 11,000 on the way back. So let's go back to depart, hit send. We got performance of 63 knots for rotate. I hope we got that. Our fuel, our caps are just checked and our selectors are both on. Controls are good. Taws is active right now, which is an instruments all the way across. We basically do like a Z check. Everything is what I'd like it to be. Our flaps are set, indicated and verified. Our trims are set. Goku Tower, good morning, November Tango Kilo. Request taxi, WeWAC, 1 POV. Good Kilo, Gruto, morning crew, right. And taxi to runway 1, some lost in 10, backtrack, can line up. Wind light in vivo, can H1022, time check 5 6. Morning, Roland. Clear to uh, backtrack 17 left. And say again, QNH, please. No, thank you, Kilo. QNH 1022. 1022, thank you. No, thank you, Will. Clear left and right. That'd be 50 knots by that taxiway right there, or else I'll be stopping on the runway. We'll just do heavy reverse if I'm going off, it's cut off, pull off, or cut off, pull off, and shut off. After takeoff, we'll pitch for 85 knots, go to lowest train as we can, considering our EPL. If that doesn't work, we're going to go ahead and feather it, then cut off, pull off, and shut off. For 85 initially, full flaps, 80, hit my emergency, smash, crack my door, and call tower if I can. It's odd, Air New Guinea's plane is here. They must not have been able to get out yesterday or had maintenance issues. That's different. I don't think I've ever seen one of their planes this early in the morning here. Definitely didn't come in this morning. All right, oil temp is up to 52 degrees Celsius now. We've got to wait up until 55 before we get out of here. Looks like it's getting pretty nice. I've got a big hole over there. I was originally going to do my instrument departure, but I'm seeing already 15 miles now, so I don't need to do that. I'm just going to go out here, circle up, potentially head out the Bennett Gap, or potentially head out behind me. So let's come in here and put in where we're going, going up to WeeWAC. Coming out of here, I've got a couple options. You can come out here and head up to the Bennett Gap and go come out here, do a couple circles, and then head back straight out behind me through the Osaloka Gap, if it's clear. So we'll go out here, do a couple turns, and see what it's like, and then determine. All right, we're 55, so ignition condition. We've got lights and strobe. Oh, I'm Tango Kilo ready for departure. From Tango Kilo and Ryan, your preferred turn? Uh, Left-hand turn out today, please. No, Tango Kilo. Game. Clear for ten kilo. As required, the runway one to the left, set goes overhead, make left turn, clear for takeoff. What's up, left? Clear for takeoff, set course overhead, left turn, over eight kilo. For takeoff, ignition condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses, 1390 on the torque, rotate 63. 
1590 on the torque. ITT not up to 720, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Airspeed's alive. There's 720. Got a bird ahead of me. There's 50 continuing. There's 63 and rotate. Up 740, there's another bird. Lots of birds this morning. Bring our power back just a tiny bit. All right, looks like we've got a couple really thin clouds right here. Probably 500 feet, kind of just scattered. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my turn out right this second. about 50 feet thick. I'm already over it. Okay, so yeah, we're going to head out this way. I'm going to get out a little bit further. Once I get cleaned up, turn left to see if I can head out behind me or not. I've got to get up to around 10,000 just to get over top of the ones behind me if there are any clouds. And if it's not looking good, and Ben is looking good, I'll probably just head out the Benna. All right, there's 10 degrees of flaps over 85. Three degrees of flaps. Got a prop on back. Do our cleanup now. Lights off, landing light, engine inlet, and our igniter's turned off. I'll go ahead and make a turn now so I can see sooner than later and determine what I want to do to get out of here. The Bennett is definitely looking Probably the easiest to get out of here, but it might just be like a high overcast with a bunch of low lining clouds. And it's kind of hard to see if there's layers or if it's just one layer. These are the hardest days to kind of determine the best. Okay, yeah, it looks like I can just get over top of it, maybe at 12,000. So we'll just continue on in this kind of shallower turn though. And we'll just set course overhead. It might just be like a high overcast today all the way to Weewak with maybe a little bit of rain and kind of medium clouds as we get closer like we just showed you guys just a second ago. Not sure. That's all we have here in PNG. I don't have any other forecast except windy. And sometimes she gets it good and sometimes she doesn't. Oh, you know what? I'm a I think I'm actually seeing the top of Wilhelm potentially. So maybe we will go up that high. Croker Tower, November Tango, Kilo, departed time 03, and we'll be tracking initially 321 on climb 12000, estimating semi. Uh, it doesn't have me at my next point in here because I didn't put it in. Um, whoop, no. Estimating my UE time of 50. Seems a bit long. So between Kilo 12000 and contact Mosby on primary VHF 120 decimal 169 Jeff 65908 at 15 miles. 120 at 15 no November thank you. Get my heading autopilot on. Let's put this in here and then let's add my spots my UE there we go now we have that so now if we head back to the map it will give me an extra point right there anchor Oka tower November tank kilo revised that's my, my UE 43 that sounds better all right it does look like we can get over so I'm gonna get rid of the Osaloka gap and just have my direct course on here Let's stick up the big map here. This over here is Mount Wilhelm. It actually does look clear. We're pointing there, so... I'm not sure if that's it or that's it. I'm not sure. I don't know if we'll actually be able to get to the high. We're going to be in the icing levels for sure at that point. So if it is cloudy, then going into clouds when the temperatures are in the prime icing, clouds have a lot of moisture. This only has pedo heats. 
and that's it. So it's not ready to go icing stuff. We'll see. Oh, so I wanted to tell you guys about my new watch. Um, Forstner Watch Company sent this to me and said, hey, we want you to try out our watch. So anyway, I think it's kind of cool. I don't really do a lot of brand deals on my channel because I like just selling you guys stuff that I made myself, like my book or something like that. So, but this watch, um, Forstner A12, it's basically modeled after the old astronaut watches back in like the 60s and stuff. If you like go and that. check out their website, it has a little bit of information on it. And that was one of the reasons why I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll try it out for you guys because that's cool that it has like an aviation history and things like that. But this A12, it brings back a long lost watch style that was once a critical player in the US spy plane and early NASA programs, which holds a very special place in Forstner's history. Mid 20th century, the original makers of this watch uh, it was supplied to test pilots flying the A-12 high-altitude Mach 3 reconnaissance aircraft as well as the X-15 hypersonic rocket powered aircraft. So, pretty cool that the same style and stuff was used back then. I like it just because it's so simple. I like really simple watches. It doesn't have any numbers on it or anything. That's the kind of watch that I really like. So, just the fact that it did have some aviation history and stuff. Go check out their website. It's well-priced as well. I think it's pretty cool watch just because it has a retro feel to it and stuff. So anyway, all right, it actually does look like Wilhelm is clear. So I think I'm going to do a mended 15000. Get my oxygen out. Get ready to call up Moresby. Just let them know I'll just be flying up to one zero miles left of track initially, and then we'll head back on down probably to 12,000. Heading, head on over, let's do nearest. Figure out how far we are. We're eight miles from Garoka. This is a non-pressurized airplane, so that's why I have to wear oxygen. Put our oxygen down here. And then adjust this right here. And we'll do 16,000. It's actually looking way better than I was anticipating in my mind. Looking forward, it is a high overcast, but it actually looks really beautiful. So, yeah, probably no dramas whatsoever. Morsby 1201, November Tango Kilo, transfer. November Tango Kilo, Morsby, good morning. Reading your files, go ahead. Likewise, November Tango Kilo. One one miles to the northwest of Garoka, passing one one thousand eight hundred on climb, requesting amended one five thousand for the next two zero miles, and I'll be dropped back down to one two thousand. Estimating my UE four two. November Tango Kilo, area QNH one zero one one, and copied amended one five thousand. No reported traffic. November Tango Kilo, I'll be tracking up to one zero miles left of track. November Tango Kilo, one zero miles left of track. No reported traffic. November Kilo. November Tango Kilo, HF6598 or 8819. Mayui on 126.7. 6598. Please hit 8819er and 1267 at Mayui, November Kilo. Every time I've come up here, I'm always looking for hikers, hoping that I can see some hikers up there, but I've yet to see anybody up there yet. All right, it says we're at 14,400, and it looks like I'm at the top. These mountains I thought were supposed to be 14,793. So... Either the chart has it wrong, or the Q&H is wrong. I'm not really sure. That's autopilot off. Got a couple cool lakes up here. You can't really see them very well, but they've got like two lakes and like a waterfall going down. Caution, terrain. Oh, yes, thank you. Caution, terrain. All right, slow on down. Look at the winds up here. They're nice and smooth. You can even see like a little bit of a rainbow way out there. Well, let's see if there's any hikers up here at 15,000 today. I don't 
see anybody on that ridge. Man, I've never done the hike up here, but it's definitely on my bucket list. 500. Oop, don't see any. That's too bad. All right, well, on to WeWack now. We'll head on down from here. Enjoy the scenery as we go. It's just, it's, yeah, it's so beautiful here in PNG. All right, let's head on back to get on course again. 500. Bring our torque back on up to 1250, and then trim for the descent. There you go, Mount Wilhelm, the highest mountain in Papua New Guinea, just a few feet shy at 15,000 feet. Well, Wendy's forecast does not really depict what I'm seeing out here now. It made it out to be a lot worse. Maybe it's only picking up, there's 200 to go, all this low lining clouds here. But even closer into WeWAC, I'm not really even seeing the moisture and the buildup in the rain that it was kind of forecasting what I could expect. I mean, there is a rainbow, so maybe it's already rained itself out. Not really sure. Fine with me, though. RSB 1201, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, most be. go ahead. November Tango Kilo, left 15,000, now maintaining 12,000. We'll be back on track by Mayui. Estimating Mayui, still 4-3. November Tango Kilo, Roger, no report of traffic. November Tango Kilo. The rain is not here anymore. I, I mean, I can see out like 50, 60, 70 miles as far as what I'm I think I'm seeing, I'm seeing the mountains way out kind of north of Weewak. It looks like I should have no issues getting in. I'm almost to my so I'm gonna be calling up them in just a second. Let's go ahead and switch this over. We'll switch this to 126.7 and push it over. Go ahead and set up our descent profile. We're going all the way down to a thousand feet, basically pattern altitude over top of Weewak. And uh, we'll go down at 800 feet per minute. It's the top of descent mark right there. Mars B126.7, November Tango Kilo, position. November Tango Kilo, most B, readability 4, go ahead. Likewise, November Tango Kilo, Mayui this time, 1, 2000. Estimating WeWAC, 1, 5. November Tango Kilo, 1, 2000, no reported traffic. Oh, but before we get in here, we can go over WeWAC's landing chart. Um, 1,600 meters long, runway 10 and 28. It says it has ATIS. I've never heard ATIS, but let's give it a go today and just see if... if November Tango Kilo, confirm back on track. A affirmative, November Kilo. November Tango Kilo. All right, 1282 is ATIS, and it's not receiving, so I didn't think so. so. Right now, the winds are kind of coming out of the west, so I'm going to assume that they're going to be coming out of the west there as well. So if need be, what we'll do is we'll fly overhead, join into a right downwind runway 28. If not, if the winds are just pretty much calm, what we'll do is just fly overhead and then enter to a left downwind 10. Either way, it's fine with me. Morsey, Morsey, 1267, full plane, Sierra Charlie, departure. Sierra for Charlie, most we go ahead. Sierra for Charlie departed, WEWAC 4 in Gorham, Medevac, time off, 2256, track 137, not about 3000, uh, circuit 2320, PLB1. Sierra for Charlie, not about 3000, area QNH 1011, no additional reported traffic to November Tango Kilo, Kodiak. Bobby traffic, November Tango Kilo, Sierra for Charlie. All right, he just departed WeWAC, and he's basically just tracking kind of right out into that area right there. So he'll be below me, he said 3,000, so that's kind of what I was thinking actually, is what he'd be going out at. Vertical track. There we go, Betty's telling me it's time to head on down. So first thing I'm gonna do is turn my altitude all the way down to a thousand feet. Alpha Holter must be HF six five nine eight primary secondary eight eight one nine. My vertical speed, and then turn it all the way down to eight hundred feet per minute. We'll do seven hundred, 
kind of let it get there, and then I'll go up to 800. Otherwise, I'll just go up to Michael 900. Michael for Hotel Mosby, 167. Also, now we're in a descent. A little bit of left rudder trim in there. Then real quick, I can see where am I going to reach my 1,000 foot. Just past WEWAC right now. We'll kind of let things settle in because it's going only at 750 right now. We'll go up to 900 feet and see how that turns out. I'm going to keep my power setting the exact same all the way down. You can see it's already up to 1280. It was set at 1250 and that will probably go all the way up to 1450, close to 1500 feet by the time I actually, or 1500 foot pound of torque, by the time I get down to WEWAC. It's going to increase my speed. I'm at 152 right now. And I'm going to let it get up to around 170-ish because max is 182 in this plane. If you guys are a flight simmer and you would like to learn how to fly the Kodiak or just learn how to fly in general and you're not a flight simmer but you'd like to get into it, you guys got to check out my Kodiak sim course. I have a link down below. It's a few hours long. It's very similar to the content that I put on here, but it's very concise and it goes through kind of different lessons on takeoff, landing, cruise, how to use the G1000, how to use the MFD, how to even do some instrument work and things like that, how to do all the power settings, what everything means, where to be looking for. It's really comprehensive in everything that you need to do to get yourself going on flying a turbine aircraft and also specifically the Kodiak. So if you guys are interested, I run deals on it all the time. I think I'm even running a deal right now. Check out the link down below, save yourself some money, and uh, yeah, learn how to fly. We're just 14 miles out. I'm 170 on my indicated airspeed, so I'm just going to continue to pull my power back as I keep going lower to remain 170. I've got 16 knots of wind coming from this way. I can always tell right here. People always wonder how I know what the winds are because it does all the calculations for me. So as I'm coming over these little rolling hills in front of me, they're not very tall up. They're only about 2,000 feet MSL, but they have some pretty good rollers and things like that when the winds are coming out from the west. So I might slow down a little bit more as I'm coming over top of those just so that I'm not... I mean, I am fairly heavy, but I don't want to get into any kind of rolling turbulence and things like that, whipping in at 170 knots because my airspeed is just going to be bouncing around probably 10 knots. Mars B1267, November Tango Kilo in the circuit. We will cancel SAR. Tango Kilo, we will salvage terminated. November Tango Kilo. Looks like I've got 22 knots, so I am going to go ahead and land on runway 28. All stations, we whack. November 10 kilo, we'll be flying overhead to join into a right down one. 28, we whack. I doubt I'll have 22 knots on the ground. I guess if I were like 7 to 8 at most, but we'll see. But if it is whipping this way, I'm going to expect some wind shear close to the ground as I'm coming in on final. Going 73 final, 83 on base, and 93 on downwind. Bring our torque all the way back to around 450. All right, winds looks like they're straight down the runway. Can't really tell, but not really that strong on the ground, doesn't look like. Oh, yeah, six or seven knots. All stations, we whack now over Pink Hilo right down, one, two, eight. Then once we get here to the coast, we'll go base and slow to 83 knots. Just pull my power back, that will slow me down. Everything else, pitch, everything else stays the same. Once I get down to 83 knots, then I'm just going to be adjusting my power to be able to maintain that 83 knots. Go full flaps, checklist is complete, turning final, and slowing to 73 knots. All right, still 16 knots at this altitude, so expect wind shear over the golf course, or what used to be the golf course. There's 
are 73 knots, 500 on the descent. It's going to come up and be a little bit shallow though. And yeah, wind's already dropping off, but down to 9 knots, so. Now 7 knots, 3 knot crosswind. And runway's clear, we're continuing. You guys want to see the return flight? I'll see if I can record a time lapse back to Garoka. Stay tuned. That's it. See you guys next time.